Hello there. So I'm just going to briefly go over what it takes to form a partnership or to register your partnership with the Secretary of State. Uh, there's no online filing method in the state of Maine, so you're going to need to download the PDF file. Either it's a certificate of LP or LLP or the application to uh, conduct business. Uh, in order to file, you need to pay the filing fees, so that's going to be $175. Uh, for domestic partnerships, about well, $250 for all foreign partnerships. That's across the board. Uh, you can also pay, you can pay by check and you can also pay by credit card. Uh, so we have a voucher here in which you can uh, put in your credit card information. Also, foreign en entities will need to uh, accompany their original application with a certificate of existence that's been issued by the Secretary of State of their original jurisdiction. And you'll also need to fill out a father contact cover letter. Uh, if you click here, it'll bring you down to our brief tutorial button to go on there. Uh, after all these things have been completed, you can send in your filing to this address here, and that'll complete it. So below, we'll just sort of go over what needs to go on each um, each certificate or application. Also, before before we do that, though, you should know that. Uh, if you're filing with the Secretary of State, the name that you use in your form needs to be distinguishable from that of any other business entity in the state of Maine. So in, to make sure that that's the case, you can perform a business entity search. And this will supply you with the, all the business names on the Secretary of State database. Uh, it won't provide you, however, with the reserve name. So it, it's not a certainty if you don't find your name on there. Uh, however, it's probably a pretty good indication. Also, you can perform a name reservation, which will make sure that your name doesn't get taken for a period of 120 days before you file the Secretary of State, and it will ensure that your name is unique to, uh, to your entity. So, how to file a domestic LP. We have the link for the PDF here. Essentially, it's pretty basic information. All you need is the name of the LP, the street address of designated office, registered agent, uh, name and address of each managing partner, and then here you're also going to be able to check if you want the LP to have limited liability amongst its partners. So that'd be a limited liability, limited partnership. And then uh, you can also check off if it provides professional services and then have all general partners uh, provide their name and then sign it. Oops. Uh, the same thing can go for domestic LLPs, although even less information will be required. Uh, you need the name of the LLP, registered agent information, uh, which means indicating whether it's a commercial registered agent or non-commercial. And then if it is a commercial registered agent, you can provide the CRA number. Um, and the address, of course, of the registered agent. Also, the contact person's address and name and the partner's names and signatures, as well as the date, can be provided. Foreign LPs. A uh, similar process to foreign LLPs, uh, here again we have the link for the PDF. Also by clicking on this you'll get the link as well. Um, pretty much the same stuff, uh, the name of LLP, the proposed name to be used in Maine, as well as the fit fictitious name if that's applicable. Now, that's only applicable if you found out that there's another name which has a really similar, or another entity which has a really similar name to yours. So you need to use a fictitious name. Uh, you also need the date and jurisdiction of organization, street and mailing address of the principal office, and the required office in the original jurisdiction, if that's applicable to you. All the registered agent information, uh, the name and address of each general partner, whether the foreign LLP is an LLLP, just like we talked about before. Um, if it provides a professional service, uh, at this point you can add that, and then the date and signature of an authorized general partner and their printed and or type name. Uh, same thing for a foreign LLP. I won't go over all this one because for one you can read it and another it's pretty much exactly the same as an LP. Uh, the link for it is here and again by clicking on the image. Now finally uh, once you're finished that you can fill out the filer contact cover letter. This is going to have the name of the entity, the list of filings enclosed, special handling if applicable that means either it's going to be expedited filing uh, for 24-hour service or immediate service, or you can select like hold for pickup. Uh, 
and then also like the total of the filing fees and close. So either if you do choose to expedite your process, you're going to need to pay an extra fifty or hundred dollars. You can tack that onto your initial filing fee. Uh, you need the name of the applicant, the daytime phone number of the applicant, the email address of the applicant, and the name and mailing address to receive the attested copy. And that will pretty much conclude your filing with the Secretary of State. You should also uh, apply for a federal employer identification number, or FEIN. You can click on this for more information on that, but basically it will allow you to open bank accounts and allow for the IRS to recognize you as a legitimate tax paying entity. Uh, also, domestic partnerships should think about drafting a partnership agreement, uh, which is pretty much what it sounds like. It'll delineate the relationship between the partners and the company to avoid confusion in the case of a legal dispute or the dissolution of the company. Uh, so click on this, you'll get a free template and also just more information as to why you might want to incorporate that into your partnership. And also each year, June 1st, you'll need to file, by June 1st it is, you'll need to file a, an annual report which will update the Secretary of State of any changes that have happened over the previous year. This will be charged $85 each time they file this. Foreign entities, $150 unfortunately. Uh, Nonprofits, which probably doesn't apply to you unless you apply for a nonprofit corporation from the time you file this until June 1st of next year. But at any rate, um, that will be charged $35. Uh, all this can be done online. If you just click on this, you'll be brought to the site in which you can enter your charter number and then edit all the information following this. I hope this was helpful. Uh, best of luck to you guys.